Hello all, myself Janil. We are discussing shear strength of soil. This is video part 3. In previous two videos, we have understood basic idea of shear strength. Where is it derived? Uh, like Mohr stress, like Mohr failure envelope, like Mohr Coulomb theory and different theories. Let us continue with the experimental techniques like direct shear test which we have seen in the previous lecture. Let us move to other tests. Unconfined compression test. Now in the image it is unconfined compression test unit or we can say assembly. Uh, you can see probing ring here, you can see uh, the loading device here, as well as you can see here uh, uh, assembly to put your soil there. Now, let us understand some procedure. Specimen is placed on bottom plate first. So you can see bottom plate here, you will have to put a specimen in the cylindrical shape here. It is arranged like the upper plate touches the specimen. Then you have to pull the upper plate down or you have to uh, upside the bottom plate so that it is arranged like that. There is your specimen, upper plate, and bottom plate. Like this should be there. Next step is dial gauge and probing ring are set to zero. Here you are seeing a dial gauge as well as here there is a probing ring. Both should be set to zero. Compressive load is applied to specimen by turning the handle. Here you are seeing an handle. By that handle, we can apply load or compressive load to the element or soil specimen. What it will do? It will uh, upside make your uh, make your component uh, compressed. Right. So next step is as handle is turned, upper plate will cause compression. So uh, However, the upper plate will cause compression and the specimen will uh, gradually get smaller in size or gets compressed. Handle is turned gradually to produce 0.5% to 2% per minute strain. So, uh, it is very minimal amount. Don't uh, move your handle like a steering, but we have to make it like a gradual movement. Right? Shearing is continued till the specimen fails or 20% strain. As we have seen previously in direct shear test, we have to do the testing up to it gets 20% strain value. Approximately, compressive force is determined from probing ring and actual strain is measured from dial gauge. So, probing ring will give you amount of compression applied as well as dial gauge will provide you actual strain. Right, dial gauge will give you a displacement value from original value and displacement value you can find strain and results are calculated like this AF area at failure should be found out is equal to A0 upon 1 minus epsilon now A0 is original cross sectional area which was before the testing of the soil specimen and epsilon that is axial strain amount that we have already found out. Another formula to be used is sigma 1 is equal to P upon AF where P is axial load applied and AF just we have found out that is area of cross section at failure. So this is how unconfined compression test is performed and procedures are like this. And in triaxial compression test so, triaxial compression test. Now, its name is like triaxial and compression test. So, triaxial it gives compression from all three axes, and that is why it is known as triaxial compression test. It is providing uh, a 3D, uh, you can say, 3D pressure to the soil specimen, so it will be a just like an actual field condition. So it is very important from that point of view also. Let us understand through this picture. Here uh, an assembly is shown which is triangular compression test. In this assembly, this assembly consists of basic uh, mechanism let us understand. Uh, first one, here you can see a loading frame. 
write this. Uh, then it is provided with a load cell, which will give you an amount of load. Displacement transducer. When you apply load and soil is compressed, it will show you how much amount of compression is going and how much displacement is there. So, a uh, displacement trans transducer are used for this. Triaxial cell. So, in between this soil specimen will take place. You have to put soil specimen here and it is known as triaxial cell. So, it will it is a cell which comprises number of water of water pipes which will provide water to the soil specimen or we can say surrounding or circumferential water to the soil specimen which will be in a cylindrical shape. Then touch screen display is also provided so you can uh, maneuver your figures you can maneuver your pressure as well as different details and the another uh, another one machine is provided which is a uh, automatic pressure controller if you want to give a constant pressure this machine will help you out to give a constant pressure uh, which is uh, controlled by automation uh, so that you can provide a measured a pre-known uh, pressure to the soil let us understand procedure now. So, first step is to prepare a cylindrical specimen which is placed upon saturated porous stone. Now, we know porous stones, right? But we have to put a saturated, full of water, porous stone, and then we have to put soil specimen there. Cylindrical specimen is encased in a rubber membrane. So, mem so rubber membrane should be used to encase the specimen and seated at the bottom pedestal and seated at the bottom pedestal and also by loading cap on the top. So, it is uh, covered from both the sides, top and bottom. From top, we can see loading cap and in bottom, we can see bottom pedestal. Moving further, third step is membrane will help in preventing the water prevention. So, why rubber membrane? Membrane will help to prevent or to prevent the penetration of water in the soil specimen. So, we have to provide a rubber membrane as a soap. Triaxial cell is filled with water and pressure is applied. Then, after putting, after placement of the soil specimen, we will apply water pressure from circumference to from all the sides we are providing water to it. And water is transmitted through all around and top. And it is called cell pressure or we can say confining pressure. So, uh, it is in a triaxial cell, so we can tell it like a cell pressure and it is also known as confining pressure. It will confine the soil specimen, right? Next, the cell pressure is held constant. So, you have to peak a constant amount of cell pressure. And additional axial stress is imposed through the top or we can say a ram given on the top which gradually falls down and which will provide compression or which will provide stress to your soil specimen and that actual stress is known as deviator stress let us talk about key points of this experiment so first one that is specimen is subjected to load from all three directions you have to keep in mind that in all three directions we are applying stresses in the first stage it is subjected to an all round confining pressure it is also known as sigma 3 or we can say sigma 3 on the sides and top and bottom. After consolidation stage, second stage is known as shearing stage. So there are two stages, first one is consolidation stage and second one is shearing stage. Additional axial stress is also known as deviator stress. It is applied on the top surface through a ram. So a ram will provide additional pressure from top. So, total stress will be sigma c plus sigma d or we can say sigma 3 plus sigma d. So, we have to keep in mind this formula. Vertical sides will be having minor principal stresses. So, minor principal stresses will be there on vertical sides of your soil specimen. Top and bottom surfaces will be having major principal stress. 
it is quite obvious amount of the uh, quantical stresses will be very much higher let's see why it is known as major principal stresses now let us move to numericals first problem in an unconfined compression test a sample of clay 8 cm long and 4 cm in diameter so we have been provided with the dimensions of the soil specimen fills under a load of 120 newton at 10 percentage of strain compute the shearing resistance taking into account the effect of change in cross section of sample so we have to find out shearing resistance so let us write given data first d0 or we can say do is provided 4 cm so diameter of the uh, soil specimen is given as 4 cm and 40 mm will be there a0 so before failure the soil specimen was a0 pi by 4 into 40 square so it becomes 1256.63 mm square same way length is also provided l0 that is 8 cm or 80 mm so these are all values before failure of the soil specimen you should understand that uh, epsilon that is strain which is given as 10 percentage and it is unitless do not forget that p load is given as 120 newtons so i have been given all the data and test is performed which is unconfined compression test so uh, from unconfined compression test we can write the formula as Q U is equal to sigma one, is equal to P by A F, which we have already seen in the experiment in the previous video. So we have P value that is 1.3 A F value. Now for A F value, we can use formula A zero or one minus epsilon. A zero is given, epsilon is also given. So I'm putting A zero and epsilon, I will get A F as 1396.26 mm square. Now I have the formula sigma one is equal to by ef so i can write 120 by 1396.26 and getting sigma 1 answer as 0.086 newton per mm square and it is uh, almost equal to 86 new kilo newton per meter square so i have got my q or sigma 1 now i will plot a graph right from graph i will find some inputs let us understand this graph graph should be plotted of shear stress versus normal stress what i will do is if my q u is 86 so ultimate q should be 86 and uh, i have to put draw a semi circle there and i will uh, draw it from origin so i'll get my curve like this and in the center 43 will be my top load my top q u Will be of 43, or we can say uh, 43 is the value of shearing stress. So that's it for the this problem. We will continue in the second problem in the next video. Thank you.